Okay, so this is Linda. I've been trying to get to this project, and every time I do it, I get re recording, and I go, oh, gee, I can do this too. So it took me a little bit longer than I normally take to do something. Um, but basically, it's creating a Trapunto um, type of design, taking a super design, and bringing it into, cre into the digitizing software of MySonet Platinum, and then adding some applique. So again, I used the MySonet Platinum. The super design I'm using does not come in the older versions of the software. So we're gonna take a super design into digitizing and we're gonna create an applique. We're gonna change the stitch order. We're gonna insert some color changes. We're gonna globally change properties, which is a really cool thing. We're gonna create a fringe circle. We're gonna use stitch editor, which used to be called modify in the older versions to add a border. We're going to use and then again use that quote block creator to create a cross hatch. I love using that. Done using my Sonet Platinum. This you could do some of these steps using the older software. You just wouldn't have this particular design. So to stitch this out, I'll do another video on the actually stitching it out. 240 by 150 hoop, 13 by 18, two pieces of 13 by 8 pieces of muslin for the top and back, or you could use a Kona cotton or a linen, whatever you want to use two 13 by 18 inch, 18 inch pieces of batting, scraps of fabric for leaves and flower, embroidery thread and bobbin with thread, whisper web or any other kind of light, light weight stabilizer. So let's get Okay, so let's get started and we're going to try and create this. Um, you could use it as a quilt block, you could use it as anything, but the idea is to take a super design bring it into the digitizing module, break it into pieces, and add some appliques. So you're gonna see that here in a second. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna do file and I'm gonna do new window, and that will bring me a new window nice and clean with nothing on it, blank canvas. The hoop I'm gonna use is the 240 by 150 large hoop, and I'm going to have it turned rotated so I can do okay. And now what I want to do is I'm going to actually go to the Create tab. I'm going to Digitizing. With the Digitizing module open, it's automatically going to bring this up for me. And what I want to do is I'm going to start a design with no picture. So I have nothing in here, and I'm just going to choose this. I'm going to choose the hoop 240 by 150, and I'm going to do Finish. And I now have a blank screen in front of me. So what I want to do is I'm going to the insert super design. So I need it. I'm going to search for flowers. Type in flowers and hit enter. And the one I actually want is this down here. It looks like a line art. And if I can find it again, there it is, that one. And I'm going to change the size to 95 because I don't want it to fill the whole hoop, but I want it to fill a part, part of it. So I'm going to do insert. So I now have that pretty flower. Now I'm going to close my insert super designs because I'm only going to play with this one. And there's no color to this. This is strictly all different running stitches and triple stitches, and it's all the same color. But so I want to ungroup this. So I'm going to click on the group here, and I'm going to do a right mouse button, and I'm going to say ungroup it. And it's going to break it so that it's all separate pieces. So each little piece, it's not grouped together. First thing I want to do is I'm going to change the color. And I'm going to go here. I'm going to go on the right-hand side. And I'm going to double-click. And I'm going to pull up one of the greens. And this green happens to be 2743 Robus and Anton Rayon 40. You can choose whatever one you want, but I just like using these little quick colors for what I do in here. I'm going to do OK. Now, the whole thing got changed to that, and now I need to start making some changes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start breaking this into pieces. So I have my triple stitch there, which is going around the outside edge here. Now I have this double stitch, which is this piece, and I'm going to I want to insert a color change here. So to do that, I need to click on triple stitch above that. I need to do a right mouse, insert a color change, and I'm going to go to a different green. It doesn't really matter. It just happens to be 2515 Robus and Anton. Now that's going to take care of that, and it changes everything from this point all the way down my film strip to that new color. 
So that takes care of that one. This one is this stem, and I want it to be another color. So clicking on the um, item just above what I want to change, do a right mouse, insert color change, and this time I'm going to pick another green, and this one happens to be Robinson Anton 2580. There should be, yep. Okay, okay. So it changes everything from that point forward. Now I need, if you look, the next thing happens to be here. Here is my beginning of my flower. I need to change these colors. So I'm going to click on the triple stitch right there, right mouse, insert color change, and I'm going to pick on one of the purples. So it changes everything from that point forward. So then I'm going to kind of watch and see how this goes. So it's going to do that stitch. It's going to do that stitch, that one. And I just kind of kind of go along here and watch and see which things are getting done. And you're going to, we're going to make some changes to some of this here in a little bit. But as I go along, there's this here. And it's because of the way this was digitized, it is assuming some certain things to go on. Double stitch, triple, again, triple. I'm going to go here. Oh, and so this is the beginning of my center. So I'm going to click on the um, triple stitch just above that, right mouse, insert a color change, and I'm going to go to a yellow. So again, everything that stitches out after that point is going to be yellow. So I really only want those two things yellow. Then this is a triple stitch. And now I need to move that so it actually stitches right after this one here. So I'm going to take and I can actually slide this up. And as I slide it up, it's going to only go so far, and I have to kind of keep moving it up. So I'm going to move it up, and I want to get it. And what I like about this is, see how this goes, like, here? That's telling me it's that stitch, so I know I'm almost there. So it actually has to be right behind this one. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to slide it up here. So it moved right underneath 14, okay? And we're going to come back down to the bottom. Now, this is a running stitch. Now, I already have that stitch is already defined up above. And if I come up here, it's also there. So I don't need that one at all. So I'm just going to click on it. I'm going to hit delete. And I'm still good. So I actually have all my purple, my yellow here. But remember, it's going to go yellow. And then it's jumping over here and doing yellow. I need to fix that. So these three are my other leaves. So I'm going to select here, actually the one just above it. And I need to move these so they sew at the same time as these over here. So I'm going to change the color. In order to move these all the way to the top and make it quick and simple, I'm going to do a right mouse, insert a color change. I'm going to pick on that first green. It doesn't really matter because it's going to end up going away anyway. We're going to do OK. So I now have a, I have these three things are that green. I can actually slip the first one, hold my shift key, and I've now selected every, all four of those items. The color change, the triple stitch, which is the stem, the triple stitch, which is the outside edge, and the double stitch. And I'm going to move them to the top. So now they're up here at the top. And I actually want to take this one and it, this one happens to be the stem. So remember my stem over here? My stem is this one. So I can actually take this and I'm going to move this down here. This double stitch is actually this little center piece that sews here. And the other center piece is here because I want all those colors to be the same. Now, the thing I can start watching is I will start changing the order of these. So I want this to sew with this one. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to delete this color change. It's just the way you have to do it. You have to actually change the color, add a color in order to move things quickly like that. So I actually want these two items to become appliques. So I'm going to select this one. I'm going to do hold my shift key and select this one. Right mouse. I'm going to properties and I want these to be appliques. But I also want the stitch on the outside edge to be a motif line. So I'm going to select motif line. And I'm going to change this to who's far in a Viking. And the stitch I want is this little lightning-like stitch. And I want this to be a little bit 
bigger. So I'm going to change this to a, like a, a three and it does change the height of the stitch and it does change the width of the stitch just a little bit, but I need to make it an applique. So I'm going to applique, standard applique, and the color uh, fabric I want, I can leave it as green and do okay. And it automatically made it an applique. Is that not cool? So the first one that's going to sew out is going to do the three steps for that side and the three steps for this side. Then I want the double stitch, which is going to be this here, here, and here. Now I can change these around a little bit so that after this one sews, it sews that. Then it goes, bops over there. And if you were going to do these all the same colors, I would probably change this completely and probably put these up here, but you can play with this. So I've got that one. All right. So now what I want to do is I'm actually going to make this into an applique too. But what I first need to do is I need to change all these triple stitches just to running stitches. So what this, okay. this is just really cool. I can really pick on something and get a whole bunch of triple stitches all at the same time. Right mouse button, select similar, similar from everything that's visible. So what it's going to do is it's going to start selecting anything that is a triple stitch, but I don't want these to change. So I'm going to hold my control key and eliminate those. Now I can do a right mouse button, go to properties and not make it a triple stitch. I can make it a running stitch now. And do okay. So everything that was a triple stitch that was part of this flower is now a running stitch instead of it adding extra bulk. So now I also need to make an applique. Now, one of the things is because I don't want this to completely be an applique, I need it to just be the outside edge. So I almost have to really draw that part. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do triple stitch right mouse, insert a color change. And I'm gonna make it just a little bit darker purple, just so we can, it stands out. So now what I wanna do is I'm actually going to create the applique of the flower. So I'm going to go into point create, and I don't want a pattern fill. In fact, I want no fill whatsoever. I'm going to do a satin line, double check over here on the right hand side, and I'm gonna click on fill area and line, and it's right set for a satin stitch, and I want this to be about a 2.5. It's really up to you, but a 2.5 does a pretty good coverage, and I'm going to make this just a like a 5, which does a pretty good job of taking care of making that all nice and pretty. So I'm going to do applique, create area or line, and then I'm going to hold my shift key at a point, and I want to come around again, shift key at a point. And I'm just clicking around the outside edges here. Okay, so I paused it a little bit so that I could get around all the way around the outside edge. I've come to this point, which is really close to here. I'm not going to click there yet. I want to kind of come around and make sure that all of these are laying along the line. And if I touch one of the little points here that I want to be a real point, I have to remember to hold my shift key, which is different than the older versions. It used to be the control key. This one I can kind of move around a little bit. I just want this to be so it follows those lines that I drew as close as possible. Most of them are going to get covered up. It's not going to be that big of a deal, but you want to come through. When you are done messing with all the movement of those lines, right mouse click. Now, I don't want that color, so I'm going to do a right mouse button, a right mouse button again, and I'm going to change the color of my applique, and I'm going to do a select fabric. I'm going to just choose one of my lighter purples. Now, you could choose anything along here. I've got a standard applique. I'm going to do OK. So now it's got the applique, but I really don't want the satin stitches to sew until the very end after it does all my detail in here. Because right now what's going to happen 
is it's going to sew all that and then the detail is going to sew on top of that. So I'm going to go to the edit tab. I'm going to select break apart and it's going to break these into multiple pieces. And I, I need the running stitch to still happen so I know where to lay my fabric. There's my stop command. Lay my applique fabric. My double stitch, which is going to hold everything together. I no longer need this stop, and you'll see why here in a minute. So I'm going to just delete that one. I'm going to use my go to home and select delete. And I'm going to take this one, and I want this one to be down towards the bottom. So I can actually select this. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. And I really want it here. I want it before the yellow. So I'm going to just take and drag that. So now what will happen is, even though I have this as darker purple, you can change that. You can leave it whatever you want to. I... When I actually sewed this out, I did I used the same purple all the way through. Okay, so I now have that ready to go. Now I've got the center area I need to deal with. So to do this, I'm actually going to cheat a little bit. And I'm going to go into Quick Create. I just want this to be a running stitch. Because I'm going to do some fringe, I'm going to do fringe. I'm going to leave it as an applique. And I'm going to do a shape of a circle. And I'm going to, if you want to see all the different shapes, there are all, all kinds of shapes. I'm going to do a circle. And I'm going to hold my shift key. And I'm going to just drag a corner. So he kind of comes in here and covers that area. Then I'm going to come back over to the film strip. I'm going to delete, take that one. Hold my control key and select that one. Go home. Delete. So now all that's there is that applique of the little center area. Now I need to make another thing to do the fringe. So to do the fringe, we're going to go again, we're going back over to Quick Create. This time I want it to be a satin line. I don't want an applique, so I'm going to click on there. I need to double check the size of this. This is going to be very large stitches. So to make them large stitches, I'm going to change this to as big as I can get. It doesn't let you go, but so far, and I'm trying, I think 20 was it, and the density, oh yeah, see the width is going to, most it's going to let me do is 12. The density, I want to make it fairly uh, loose stitches. So again, I'm going to go, oh, let's try 25 and see what happens. I want no extra underlay. I'm going to do okay. Yep, doesn't like it. See, this is why you get and you just play until you figure out what you want. So now what I want to do is before I actually apply this, I want to insert a color change. So with my running stitch applique chosen, right mouse, I'm going to do insert color change. I'm going to go to a darker kind of color just so you can kind of see it. It doesn't mean that's what you need to use, but I need to do it so you, you can actually see this. Again, I'm going to click on, I got the circles chosen. I'm going to do a shape. And you see, it's kind of an odd looking thing. I want to right mouse click and make sure that, see where there's squares? I'm just going to click and I want to make them circles. So now it's nice and circled. I'm going to go back home. I'm going to do a box select. So I have it selected because I need this to be closer into the circle. Hold my shift key. When you do this fringe, it's not as big a deal as you think it's going to be. Because what you do is this is all going to get loose, be loose stitches. When you sew this out and after you do the tack down stitches, you are actually going to cut the bobbin thread and pull those threads to the top. So if this is uneven, it's okay. It's not a big deal. So now I need to get some stitches that are going to hold this in place. So I can do, I've got the satin line chosen. I'm going to do a right mouse. I'm going to do a copy. And I'm going to do a right mouse again, and I'm going to do paste. So now I have it a second time around, and I really don't want that I, to be a satin line. But now I can take my right mouse, I can do properties, 
I can change my satin line and I'm going to make it a double zigzag around that edge just so that I can um, keep things, kind of hold them together and it's the same size, only I want it smaller. So I'm going to hold my shift key again. Again, I just need it so that it's kind of on that inside edge to kind of hold things together. And again, I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller. Now I'm going to, on top of that, I'm going to add a tighter satin stitch to hold that all in place a little bit more. I can do a right mouse and I can do paste again I want, but I'm going to do a copy because I want it this particular size and I'm going to do paste. If I had done the other paste with this one, it would have made it this big large one. Double zigzag, my second double zigzag, I'm going to do a right mouse button. I'm going to do properties. And this time I'm doing a satin line and I want to change this much smaller and I want to make this more like a two. Density a little bit tighter. So I'm going to do a four. So now I've got this satin stitch and I can kind of move that around just a little bit. That's going to help hold all of this fringe in place, all right? We're pretty much done here. But what I want you to do is I need you to make sure that you go and you do your save as and save your EDO file. And I'm going to call this um, Punto And I'm calling this Trapunto because when we stitch this out, you're going to actually just put um, your batting and your top fabric in your hoop. That's all you're going to do because we're going to cut away the batting all the way around this outside, this edge here. And I'll try and do another video to show you how that actually happens. So now I need to go from here. And I need to close this. I love this about the MySonet software. I'm just going to close this. It's going to automatically bring it into the main part of the software. Now what I want to do is I need to take this and I need to bring this into the stitch editor. But right now, the only thing it lets me do, if I come home, if I click on edit design, it's going to automatically take me back to the digitizing part of the software. And I don't want that. So I'm going to do a come over here. I'm going to do a right mouse. I'm going to do fixes stitches so that now I can actually go to the modify or the stitch editor. If you look at this, this little, I'm going to do an undo so you can see that better. So see how this changed? That tells me it's available to change in digitizing. When I redo this, it's now available to digitize or to edit using the modify module. So I'm going to select mod edit design. It's going to automatically open up stitch editor for me with the design. I don't have to do cut and paste anymore. And now what I want to do is I'm going to get a border in here. So I'm going to go find my border and I'm going to do border app embroidery. And I don't want it to be all the way around on the outside edge. I actually want this to be really, really close. So I'm going to do a two. Okay, so now with this all selected, and I need to change this to a triple stitch. I don't want it to be a satin, I need it to be a triple. And I can change the length of it if I want to. I'm going to do create external border. It's automatically going to do these extra ones in here that I really don't want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the home tab. And the one I really want is just this one here and to be at the top, but I want to walk through the steps. So I'm going to walk through the different color changes. So there's my applique on my leaves. There's this. Now, look, it put this extra set of stitches in there and I really don't want that. So I'm going to click outside of the area, freehand select. And I'm just going to click, hold and drag a box around that. And I'm going to use delete and get rid of that. So I don't want that. So I'm going to now do, there's my stems, there's the first part of the applique, there's the inside of the applique plus all of the, the, out, the border. Now it's going to do my 
um, centerpiece here. I'm going to do next. There's my um, fringe. And this is the one I actually want to move to the very beginning. So if you watch your color over here in your design panel, you see this one has got a little check mark here. So I want to make sure that one is selected and I'm going to move it all the way to the top, all the way to the top. So now what I want to do is again, I want to get rid of all of these. If I come in here and I select this, see how it's got this little one? I don't want that. So I'm going to go and I'm going to actually select this going backwards and I'm going to get all of these. See how I get all this? So to fix that, I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to change my first color now and I'm going to change it and it doesn't really matter what it is. I'm just going to put in a pink just so it's really, really, really different from everything else. I'm going to go color sort. Now I have everything color sorted and this is the blue I want to get rid of. Do the back. I now have that selected. Select all visible and delete. So now what I want to do is draw all colors. So I have the whole design here. Now I can close this. There it is. I've closed it. I want to now take this and add in those um, cross hatches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do cut. I'm going to go to create. I'm going to the quilt block wizard. I want filled quilt block inner embroidery. Do next. The size I want, I want it just smaller than my 240 by 150 hoop. So I made it 235 by 145. I chose the shape of a rectangle. And remember, this A measurement is this. The B measurement is this. Do next. I'm going to do paste. Because remember, I cut it. So now it's available to paste. Next. And I want it really, really close to those outside edges. And I'm going to do zero. And I'm going to do next. I want crosshatch. I'm going to options, 25, which is about an inch. So my um, crosshatch is about an inch out. Finish, and there it is. Now, if you want to watch it sew, we can watch it sew. I'm going to go through here pretty quickly. Okay, so we're going to watch this play out. And we're, when it's when you're sewing this out, you're going to stop. When, Oops, let's not get the leaf in here yet. At this point, when you get this and it stops and you go to your color change, you want to stop because what you've hooped is your backing, I'm sorry, your batting and a piece of top fabric. And I just used um, like a linen or you could use like a piece of uh, Kona cotton or you could use, um, I actually, I think I used um, muslin, a white muslin. So when it's done here, I Un I take the hoop off the machine. I then take and I cut all the batting around the outside edge. Now, remember, you want to make sure that when you're hooping this, that you have actually hooped your batting and your top fabric. And then you'll have to take and you'll have to cut the batting around the outside edge because you need the tightness to still stay there. But you want most of it gone. That will give this a puffy look. Then you can continue sewing. If you feel like you need to put a piece of stabilizer at the back side underneath the batting, that's fine. You can actually tape that to the back of your hoop. Then you, just before it does the cross hatch, you're going to put another piece of batting and your backing fabric and sew this out. Now, again, I'll try and do a quick little video on actually stitching this out, but you're all done. Don't forget to save it and to export it. Um, hope to see some pictures of you actually doing this. Thanks.